What's up everybody, it's Sean here, and I'm very excited to give you guys my review of the Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro in the Mamba Sita Sweet 16 colorway. Today's video is brought to you by Soul Savvy. Soul Savvy is a membership-based community of like-minded sneakerheads with a true genuine passion for sneakers. And within Soul Savvy, they give you the tools, the information, and the resources you need to be able to buy the shoes that you want for retail. So for me, the thing I love most about being a member is that it gives me that one-stop shop so I know exactly what's releasing, when and where, and they offer a lot of perks for members as well, including a member-only store where they sell shoes only for retail, training sessions to help you cop for big sneaker releases, along with sneaker website monitors and add to cart links. And most recently, they introduced something called Soul Savvy Collect, which is a sneaker marketplace where you can show off your collection, buy, sell, and trade with zero fees and only open to members of Soul Savvy. This means that everyone has been individually vetted and you know the people that you're dealing with are real collectors and real people. So if you guys are interested to learn more about Soul Savvy and potentially become a member, I'll add a link down below in the description box for you guys to check out. So this in my hand is one of the most controversial shoes to release in the past couple of years. Releasing on May 1st for a price of 180 US dollars or about 240 Canadian dollars, this shoe celebrates the life and legacy of the late Kobe Bryant along with his daughter Gigi. And it's nicknamed the Mambasita Sweet 16 colorway because this actually released on Gigi's birthday in which she would have been 16 years old this year. So the official colorway for this shoe is black, white, and metallic gold. And even though there's all that talk about Vanessa Bryant and Nike coming to an agreement, and Kobe fans expected that because of that agreement, Kobe sneakers and his products would be a lot more accessible to the public. Well, unfortunately for this specific release, it was more of the same, meaning it was very limited, and a lot of people that wanted these were unable to get them. So some stores like Shoe Palace and Undefeated had a very limited stock, which they raffled off to the public. But the majority of the stock for this shoe was kept within Nike, and they released this as an exclusive access release through the Nike sneakers app, along with a limited drop in Los Angeles. But before everyone gets their pitchforks and goes crazy, the production start date for this shoe was October of 2020, meaning I'm assuming all the stock for this shoe was already made and just sitting in a warehouse throughout the entire year last year. So if you're asking for my prediction, I'm thinking that they just wanted to clear out the stock for this shoe, and then hopefully going forward, Kobe products will be much more available and released in greater quantities. So on that note about Vanessa Bryant and Nike coming to an agreement recently, this specific shoe is pretty much right in the middle of all the drama last year. So long story short, according to a post that Vanessa posted on Instagram, following Kobe and Nike's contract ending in early last year, she was ticked off because she never actually gave the okay for this pair to release. She had a part in designing this shoe to commemorate her daughter, so when a batch of these pairs were accidentally released to the public through Foot Patrol I believe, whoever was sent this pair by accident were able to resell their pairs for upwards of around two or three thousand dollars. But one year later Vanessa and Nike have come to an agreement, so all that drama surrounding this shoe is water under the bridge, and according to Nike all the net proceeds for this shoe are going to be donated to the Mamba and Mambasita Sports Foundation. So diving straight into the details, the base layer of this shoe, covering the majority of the upper, we have a very fine micro woven mesh that's done in this black colored finish. Overlaid on top of this mesh, we have these polyurethane scales, which resemble the look of a snake, and this has a glossy, shiny look to it. Painted on the mid panel of both sides, we have a large white colored swoosh, and then surrounding the back end of the shoe, we have what feels like a synthetic patent leather, which has a bit of a padded but plastic feel to it, and this is done in this pearlized white color. Glued on the lateral side of the heel, we have the number two, which is Gigi Bryant's number, and this is done in this gold color. And then overlaid on top of this, we have this black colored TPU heel clip. This gives you added structure and support for the back end of the shoe. And in the middle, we have the Mamba and Mambasita Sports Foundation logo, along with Kobe's name on the left foot and Gigi's name on the right foot. Turning our attention back to the front, so for the laces, these come with two different lace options. The standard default lace is a flat white colored lace with black lace tips, and I personally felt that these laces ran a little bit short, and I would have preferred if they were a little bit longer. But if you're not feeling these white laces, they also give you a secondary pair of flat black colored laces as well, if you want to give the shoe a bit more of a muted and tonal look to it. Underneath this, the bottom half of the tongue is constructed out of this black colored mesh, and within it we have this honeycomb shaped foam padding, which gives the shoe an added layer of padding for comfort, while still retaining that breathability. And on the top we have this stretchy neoprene like material in black, and glued on the very top, we have this white colored Kobe logo. The back of the tongue and the inner liner of the shoe has a silky smooth finish to it, and the textile here has a snakeskin pattern to it. And then as we take a look at the insoles, these come with a very thick foam insole, which is lined in this black colored material on top, and on the heel we have the special branding commemorating Gigi Bryant. And if you flip the insole over to the other side, you'll see that this is a very special foam insole, which actually molds to your feet the more you wear them. And you'll see it has a styrofoam look to it. 
So the upper of the Kobe 6 sits atop this full length foam midsole which is painted in black. Underneath the forefoot we have a Zoom Turbo unit which is a much bigger Zoom Air unit compared to the OG's but on the heel, whereas the OG Kobe 6's had a Zoom unit here as well, for the Pro Chos instead, all we have here is Kushlan Foam which is a very soft proprietary foam from Nike. But I find it kind of ironic that they have Nike Zoom branding on the heel when in reality the Pro Chos don't have Zoom Air here at all. Turning the shoe over to the bottom, so the outsole here is done in this white colored rubber and we have this snakeskin traction pattern found throughout. On the lateral side of the forefoot, we have this rubber outrigger which extends outwards giving you added stability. And on the heel we have the Kobe Bryant logo in black. And then underneath this we have this carbon fiber shank plate and this helps with the torsional rigidity and the midfoot support for this shoe. So that breaks down the look, the construction, and the backstory behind this shoe. And for those wondering about sizing, to me these fit like any of my other Kobe 6s, so I personally prefer to go a half size up. So I'm a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. I got these in a size 10 and a half, and they fit me well in a nice snug way. So I can't even imagine going true to size with these. I feel like they'd be way too tight, and they'd be hugging my forefoot way too much. And even by going up that half size, I still have a ton of support, and it feels very locked in. And there's just about a finger's width between the top of the shoe and the top of my toe. So long story short, I would definitely recommend going up that half size. And just to give you guys a point of comparison, I also go up a half size for the Kobe 4 and the Kobe 5, with the Kobe 6's fitting much more similar to the Kobe 5. Moving on to the comfort, so I'm going to be one of those guys that's just wearing Kobe 6's for casual use. So this review is strictly from that standpoint, and it's not a performance review. But with that said, the Kobe 6 straight out of the box is a very lightweight, very comfortable shoe to wear, even if I'm just walking around in them. So my first impression was that obviously it's a very lightweight shoe, and aside from that, there's a ton of cushioning underfoot. So the Kushlan foam on the heel has a nice soft feel to it, and you can really feel that responsiveness and that feedback even when you're just leaning back onto your heels. And in contrast, the forefoot area with the Zoom Turbo unit, it feels much more stiff and firm, but I feel like it's just one of those things that break in over time and feel much more comfortable over time. And obviously this is there in place because this is a basketball sneaker, so it's obviously there to handle more of that impact protection when you're jumping and landing on your forefoot. But again, like I said, if you're someone like me and wears your Kobe shoes for casual use, there's nothing wrong with that at all, and I think these will feel great for you too. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and craftsmanship, so first off, material quality, to be honest, the majority of the materials are synthetics. But even though they're synthetic, I didn't really feel like the materials felt cheap. And similarly, from an overall build and craftsmanship standpoint, I really had no flaws at all on my pair. I didn't notice any glue stains, any paint or anything like that. So I personally thought this was a very well-built Kobe shoe. So with all that out of the way now, let's toss these on feet and I'll show you guys how these look. To put it out there, it's pretty unfortunate that Nike wasn't able to give us more quantities of this shoe. And just by scrolling on my Instagram and just talking to friends and stuff like that, I know a lot of people were very disappointed they weren't able to grab these. But fingers crossed, hopefully that commitment is true and going forward, Nike will release more quantities of Kobe products. Because aside from his legendary career and the fact that his passing was very very tragic, Kobe shoes in my opinion are some of the best basketball shoes that Nike has ever created. For this specific pair though, obviously the resale prices for this shoe are quite high, and that's a given given this is the first Kobe shoe to release in a long long time. I think a lot of people want this shoe for sentimental reasons and just for its significance for Kobe and Gigi, but at the core of it all it is a rather simple colorway, which makes this a very wearable and very versatile shoe to wear both on the streets and on the hardwood. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro in the Mambasita Sweet 16 colorway. What are your overall thoughts on this specific shoe? And for anyone watching, were you also able to grab these for retail? Did you take an L and buy these for resale? Or did you just take an L and just move on? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at sgo8, check me out on Twitter at sean.go, and visit my website at seangoca So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and hopefully it helped you in some way. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one.